and welcome to another video and in this video we're going to work through the tutorial uh, Conway Life T1 so this is going to uh, do the game of life uh, just using the DOM API just to get used to this idea of using JavaScript to manipulate the DOM and uh, we're doing it kind of far from first principles quite raw rather than using a uh, front-end framework but it's going to help us see the motivation for front-end frameworks really uh, so the place I'm going to start let's pop over to um, let's pop over to a terminal and in this particular case I have um, I've got my client example server and uh, that client example server is running and I'm in the public HTML directory uh, but all that is there at the moment is the my first example I don't have the tutorial yet so let's first of all go and get the tutorial and so let's git clone uh, followed by uh, this URL with the HTTPS that we can get up the front there so let us clone that and now I have a directory here tutorial Conway Life T1 and if I pop into my web browser and I go to uh, localhost port 9000 is where I happen to be running my server uh, so here is my server started on port 9000 and uh, let's open up uh, oops sorry let us open up uh, tutorial Conway Life T T1 index.html. It's auto filling it there for me because I've been there before uh, from doing a little dry run. Um, but uh, to, to save making a typo, I'm going to accept its auto fill. Okay, and this is going to take a moment loading. Not sure um, quite what's taking it so long, but so at the moment uh, you can see that we've got um, not a lot here. But the first thing I'm going to do is open the developer tools. And the reason is that the first step in the tutorial uh, is going to do some stuff that we won't be able to see in the page, but we will be able to see in the structure of the HTML um, that is uh, on the page after our script has run. Uh, so let's now pop to Visual Studio Code and let us open a folder. Let's open the folder that has that tutorial in it. So it was source code. Um, teaching cost 360 2018 uh, client example server it's in my public directory in there and there is tutorial Conway life and let's just open the whole folder uh, in the sidebar of Visual Studio Code so that I can have a look at the different parts uh, so let's have a look in index.html uh, so we can see very little HTML there it's loading our game of life script itself uh, which I've already written for you and it's loading our render script uh, which to start with is empty uh, now if I pop back to the tutorial instructions the first thing I said to do was alright let's just check out the solution and check that that's working so let's pop to the code over here and we're going to cd into the directory and if we do ls uh, minus la uh, we can see that there is here uh, this dot git directory so this is a repository that has the full history of development of this little tutorial uh, but it's also got a couple of branches so I can say git uh, branch minus v and at the moment I'm on the master branch uh, but I happen to know um, that if I go git checkout there is a branch called solution and uh, one of the reasons that you can know that there's a branch called solution is because if you go to it on GitLab and have a look at this dropdown, there is a branch called solution. So I've just checked out the solution for this, uh, which is going to have the code already filled in. And so now if I go to my game of life and I hit refresh, I get all these dots and I can start um, making cells live and I can start se stepping forward the game Conway's game of life and seeing how it behaves. Okay, so that has shown that the the code loads and the code works. But now we're going to go back and we're going to check out the master branch and we're going to do the tutorial. So git checkout master and let's pop back to the browser and let us reload that. <clears throat> and we're back to the situation where unfortunately there is no game of life on that screen. Uh, but the code is available for us. Okay, popping back to the tutorial. Uh, to the tutorial description. Uh, now, time to open the code 
and I recommend Visual Studio Code as an editor for this. This is the one I'm showing in the video. And let's have a look in gameoflife.js and see about the game itself and how it's implemented and what functions are available. So let's go and do that in the video. And let me talk you through it. So the game of life itself, um, the uh, we, we've seen how it kind of works with a grid of cells and some of the cells come alive and there's rules as to when you uh, click and step to the next state of the game, which cells die and which cells become alive. Um, I'm storing that um, uh, I'm storing the grid actually as a single flat array uh, and so if, if I've got you know uh, say the first four cells might be the first row the next four might be the second row the next four might be the third row except it's not four we've got the height and the width uh, up here uh, we've got various functions going on inside here for working out things like how to look into that array uh, how to clear the board and set it that all cells are dead, a function for toggling whether a cell is alive or not, uh, a, a function for getting whether a cell is alive that will take into account that if you ask for cell minus one minus one it should say no minus one minus one is not alive. Uh, a function for counting how many cells surrounding say location two comma three are alive or not. Uh, and a function for stepping the game forward that applies Conway's Game of Life rules and it does it in a new array uh, so it starts off by creating a new board goes and works out in that new board which cells should be alive and then sets the current board to be this new board that it worked out and so that is all kind of internal implementation to the Game of Life and you can see that it is inside one of these anonymous functions uh, that is immediately applied to keep it all uh, private, to keep it from um, polluting the global namespace in JavaScript. And then down the bottom here, we've published the game of life object uh, onto the global namespace. So window.gameoflife makes this available uh, globally. So for instance, if I pop to my developer tools, let's open the console and I go game of life uh, it will evaluate to this op object that has all of these different functions and these are these functions that I've been declaring down here uh, one for getting the width of the board one for getting the height of the board um, the function for checking whether a cell is alive or not the function for clearing the board and the function for toggling a particular cell in the board and the function for stepping the game forward. Uh, so in our rendering of the game, we're just going to be dealing with these fub uh, with these functions that we've made public. I almost said these uh, public functions, but these, these public functions. Um, all right, and so we are also loading render.js, but at the moment, render.js, it declares a function render, but that function render doesn't do anything. And index.html at the start, well, it clears the board and it then asks us to render the board. And at the moment, our render function is doing nothing. So back to the tutorial description. Uh, now, the first thing I say to do is have a look in index.html and find where we're going to render the board. And so in index.html, uh, sorry, in the code. Uh, here we have div, a div with the ID game and that ID is let, going to let us do document.get element by ID. Uh, we're doing this raw just using the DOM API, not using a front end framework just yet. Uh, so that there is the div element that is going to contain our game. Uh, if we pop incidentally into the, um, if we pop back into the uh, to ins the inspector, uh, we can see that when we highlight that, well, it just gives a dotted line. So an empty div, in this case, because there's, there's no styling on it, takes up no space. So we can't see that div in the screen, uh, which is why I've had to open the developer tool. So I can mouse over it and show you that, yes, there is a div there. Uh, that's going to become important as we do the next step of the tutorial. So uh, we've also loaded these JavaScript files. And uh, so first in render, let's get a reference to that game div where we want to render the game. Uh, so let us go into render.js and up the top uh, we're using let from ES6 uh, because it tends to be available in most browsers and this is going to say document.getElementById of game and so that is going to get the element that has that ID game. All right, so we've got a reference to that div. Now we want to do something with that div. We want to put some stuff inside it. 
And so let's pop back to the tutorial instructions. Uh, well, first of all, actually, it says, uh, let's at the start of any render loop, let us clear the contents of that div. Let's just wipe out what used to be there. And so let's put that in. And so this is using this uh, special property. I believe it was one of the Microsoft browsers that first introduced inner HTML as a shorthand. Uh, but that basically says that the HTML between those div tags should effectively become blank, clear everything out, remove all the children. Um, OK, uh, so that is going to clear it, but uh, we're not going to see much effect because it was already clear to start with. So now let's loop across every cell in the game and let's create a new element for it. And let's start off, um, because we're going to put a div element for every row, let's make our outer loop, uh, outer loop, uh, not outer loop, many apologies, our outer loop uh, do the y axis. Okay, so this for loop, uh, this is going to go from y is zero up to the number of rows in the board, incrementing each time. Um, but as yet, we're not doing anything, we're just looping. Uh, so within that, let's create a div for each row. How do we create a div for each row? Well, I gave the example earlier on for how you could, uh, oh, hang on. Uh, it, I gave the example in one of the, uh, at least in one of the videos, uh, for how you can create an element. Uh, it appears not to be in the text there, but never mind, let me show you it right now. Uh, so let us go let my row is going to be document dot create element and the element that I want to create is a div and so this is going to create my row element but I've not appended it yet so let us now say on that game div let's append child the row and so now we've created a row uh, a div for a row and we've appended it into the document. Let's save that, let's pop back into the browser and let's hit refresh. And so because render is being called the first time we should get a rendering on this. We can't see any difference because all the divs that we've added are empty so they take up no space. Uh, but if I expand this uh, div ideas game you can see that now we have uh, div elements for each of the rows. OK, so let's pop back to our code and let's do something very similar for the columns. Uh, let us put an inner for loop and let's pop this into our code. And for every row in there, let us create uh, a span element, um, a, 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 an inline element that uh, that doesn't, if you like, go down the page, that, that can go across the page, that uh, goes with the flow of text. So let us create an element and that element is going to have the tag of span and let us append that. And where do we want to append it? Well, I want to append it into the row. I want the div to contain the spans. And so I want to say row dot append child uh, of my span. Let's save that. Let's go back to the browser. Let's quickly reload it. Again, all those spans are empty, so we won't see them. They'll take up no space. Uh, but now if I expand any one of my uh, divs for a row, I can see all my spans going on down here. OK, so now we've, we've, we've done that. Uh, again, reload our code to see that it works. We've seen it works. Next, if the cell's alive, I want to put a, tec a, pe a text node with a hash in the span. Otherwise, I want to put a dot in the span. So let's go and do that. So in here, uh, I would now like to say, uh, let my text node be document dot create text node. And uh, in this case, well, actually, I would like uh, that to contain either a hash or a dot, depending on which one it is. Uh, so what I'm going to say is I'm going to say if game of life is alive of x comma y then I want to create a text node that's got a hash in it and I want to go span dot append child of the text node uh, otherwise I would like to create a text node and append it 
but I would like it to contain a dot. Let's save that. Let's go back to the browser. Let's reload it, and this time we should see them. We should see all the dots. There they are. There is our grid of fields, but they don't do anything. If I click on them, nothing is happening. I haven't wired any events up to this. All right, let's pop back to the tutorial. Uh, so we, we've got that, and we've got it seeing it working. Grid of dots, but initially none of the cells are alive. Now let's add an event handler. And so here I've declared a, a variable that is going to be a function for handling events. And so let us copy that code. And let's pop over here and let us uh, paste this event handler uh, into our code. Okay, that creates the event handler, but I haven't added the event handler. Uh, and so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to add this event handler to the span. I can't add it to the text node because techno text nodes won't take those kinds of event handlers. I can't really add it to the div for the row because it's not that I want to click on a whole row and the whole row becomes alive. I want to click on the cell and the cell is the, the span in this case. So let's add an event listener and the event I'm going to listen for is mouse down when the mouse goes down on that element. And the thing I want to handle it is the function which I have put into the variable handler. Uh, I could, if I wanted, have just taken that and put it uh, in here and just done it anonymously uh, there and then. As it happens, I thought, well, let's explicitly declare the handler and let's explicitly uh, wire it up there. Now, I'm using let, uh, so this should work because x and y... Uh, in this for loop should have block scope and so each x and y as we come through should be a different x and y uh, and so this should close over the value of x and y when we created the event handler and so the event handler effectively is going to remember what cell number we are. Uh, okay now this handler it is going to toggle the cell and it's going to recall render so let's go and see if this works. We refresh there it is, and now if I click on it, I am seeing cells toggling successfully. Uh, but I can't step the game forward yet. If I click that button down there, nothing happens. So let us keep going forwards in our um, let's keep going forwards in our tutorial. And down here, the next part of the tutorial was to wire up the button to step the game forward. And here I've just suggested, well, let's just do this one on the HTML in, in, in index.html. So let's just pop to the index.html and where in this case we added event handlers programmatically, uh, in this case, let's just put one straight into the node as an on-click attribute for this button. And so let's save that. Let's pop back over here. Let's now reload it. And I should be able to do things like if I do three in a row and I step, that should oscillate as to whether it's horizontal or vertical. That's just what the rules of game, the uh, Conway's Game of Life are. Uh, and I can do interesting patterns and I can step forward and see how they evolve. And it looks like that one faded after a few clicks. Uh, but OK, so that is now working. And uh, I'm not going to close the inspector yet because there's another stage to the tutorial, though. So we can draw patterns and we can step the game. We've got Game of Life working. Uh, we've got it rendering based on that array of data. And each time we click, it just clears it and then it renders. Here's what the new state of the game is, putting in elements and wiring up the appropriate events. Now, the next thing I suggested to do uh, was to show you the, the, this problem with var uh, in JavaScript. So if we go into our code, and I find in render.js, I find these two lets, and I change those two lets to be vars. So now x and y are vars, and they have function scope, and they're the same x and y are in scope all the way down here. Um, we should find that this no longer works. Uh, so let's hit refresh. And no matter what cell I click on, nothing is happening. And if I open the debugger, uh, I can find out why. So let's go into render and let us put a breakpoint into toggle cell here. And now let's click on a cell and I'm going to click on the cell up here so we know that you know this should be 0, 1, 2 for x and 0 for y. And let's click on it and the breakpoint happens. And let's add a watch expression and find out what it thinks x is. We reckon it should be 2. What is x? It reckons x is 40. 
Okay, well, what about y? Uh, y we thought should be 0. It reckons y is 20. And if we look in our code, we'll see that that 40 and 20 uh, in Game of Life, um, that, well, 20, that is the maximum height of the board. 40, that is the width of the board. And so what has happened is because um, x and y now have function scope and the same x and y are in scope all through this function, when this, these handlers have been created and closed over them, they've closed over the same variable x and y that has kept getting incremented. And it's kept getting incremented all the way up to 40, and it's only stopped as soon as it's no longer less than 40. In other words, it is 40, uh, or it is 20 for y, sorry. And so that is why we're getting um, 20 for y and 40 for x. Uh, but if we say turn that back to be block scoped, so that we will have uh, a different uh, x and y uh, in each of these uh, runs of the for loop being closed over. Then the first event handler can close over 0, 0. The second event handler over 1, 0. The third event handler over uh, 2, 0. Sorry, 0. Uh, yes, no, 2, 0. The, the, the x is the inner loop. And so that is why when I refresh, um, that is once it's loaded. Whoops. Oh, sorry, something was just being slow. I clearly got impatient. Oh, there's a breakpoint, of course. I've left the breakpoint active. Uh, let me now go and clear that breakpoint. And um, well, we can see that when I when I hit that breakpoint, y was eight this time. It wasn't twenty. So the things the things working again. Uh, it's giving the correct numbers. Uh, yeah, let's go and put that breakpoint back in, and let's click on our our um, two comma zero. And uh, where are we? Um, let me do that. Which one have I been called on? Uh, maybe I've been breakpointing too early. I'm going to clear the breakpoint. I'm going to hit refresh just so I know what state I am. Uh, I'm in. Uh, I might have been in a previous one. Let's put the breakpoint in. Let's uh, click on that one and let us see what is x. X is two. Yes, x was supposed to be two. It is two. What is y? Y is zero. Yes, y was supposed to be zero. It is. Uh, and so we are now getting the correct X and Y's happening. And so that's why our code's working again. Uh, OK, so back on the tutorial, just to uh, close off. Uh, I mean, that was checking about uh, let and uh, let and var and the difference between them. Um, but the conclusion that I've got here that I want to talk about uh, is actually we're, we're doing something that's quite similar to what at least one of the frameworks we'll look at later does behind the scenes. Um, we're just doing it in a slightly clunky way. Uh, and so what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that is we have our data uh, sitting actually in an array here in JavaScript. This is all just plain old JavaScript. This is a JavaScript program modifying JavaScript data. And then we have a render command that will take that JavaScript data and will produce um, the uh, HTML that uh, in into the page uh, that we need and every time we update the data uh, it will update the page to match uh, in this case we do it by the slightly trivial method of well let's delete everything that was between those elements and recreate them um, other frameworks we'll see will have more intelligent ways of doing that um, but this is kind of our first pass at doing it manually synchronizing stuff from JavaScript data uh, into uh, live HTML in the page, updating it there and then. OK, I'm going to stop this recording before I waffle on too much, but that was to step through uh, that first tutorial.